Okay, uh, I'm just making this video to show uh, the effect of dihedral angles for your wings on uh, flying and stuff. If you don't know what a dihedral angle is, it's this angle right here on the wing. Um, technically, this is a dihedral wing and this is an ahedral wing. Uh, I think that's what it's called. I don't really care, but anyway, let's call it the wing angle from here on out. Um, that's basically how much your wing is angled, like on the uh, cantilever. Uh, that's probably not the right term to use for... I'm trying to be simple, I guess, on the where it attaches to the middle of the plane, the fuselage. That's how much the angle is. Like, this is a, a four-degree uh, dihedral on this plane, and this is a uh, negative two-degree ahedral on this plane over here. I'm just going to show you some glide tests. First, got to explain something, though. There's something called the dihedral effect, which basically means, like, say you're, like, going into a turn, like, uh, like this, right? Uh, how is your plane going to react to that, right? Well, there's going to be, like, wind coming in here because your plane's leaning down this way, like, turning into the turn here. So there's going to be wind coming this way, and your plane's going to be side-slipping, kind of. So it's going to be going like this way, even though it's pointing straight down. It won't follow the exact path that it's going. This is probably a terrible example, but whatever. Like, you're turning, and then your plane is going like this way, kind of. It's not going straight down where the plane is pointing. So you get side-slips. So you're going to have wind coming in under these wings and stuff and making it do different stuff. So basically, if we look here... If you were turning with this plane, rather than like this plane, what's going to happen? You're going to have wind coming up underneath this wing, pushing it up, because it's at an angle like this. It's going to have a different angle of attack, because it's leaning over. So it's really, really, I should probably actually have this like, like this more. You're going to have wind coming in, because it's leaning down and coming down like this. You're going to have wind hitting the bottom of this wing like this, and then wind's going to be hitting right here. And that's going to try to push the plane back to facing this way. So, if you have your wings uh, dihedral upward like this, you're going to basically have a more stable plane. It's not going to want to spiral out of control as much. don't know why that was slept instead of uh, frozen, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> basically, you're just... Your plane, so if you want a more stable plane, you want to have a, a dihedral on the wings like this. Though in Gary's mod, this doesn't, um, this doesn't quite reproduce like in real life. There's some major, major problems, but it does on larger models than these, it actually can uh, help quite a bit. But a lot of it actually depends on the vertical stabilizer efficiency. Because that throws a lot of things off. Because fin doesn't really work like real life. Especially because there's like literally no air currents um, in Gary's mod. I mean there's like some wind resistant stuff. And fin tries to like emulate some of that. But it doesn't quite work. Um, yeah. But other than that it actually can help. And then you also get a pendulum effect. Which basically means that the middle of the plane's heavy. And doesn't have lift. So it's going to try to push itself downward. While the wings are out here. So that can help balance it out too. But that all depends on weight. Anyway. Let's look at this ahedral plane. Um, if this was turning it would be like facing. Like this. And then it would be sliding this way. Like I said before. So if it's sliding that way. We look at these wind currents if it's sliding this way then wind is going to be hitting right here and it'll be going under the wing and hitting right here so if it was hitting right here that's the angle of attack that's how it's facing so that would push the plane more like this it would push this plane down and this one up so this basically actually having an ahedral wing actually removes stability from the plane it makes it less stable and you're like why would you do that but um a lot of military fighter craft will actually have a negative wing like this, like the F-22 Raptor and the uh, Harrier, I can't remember the model name of the Harrier, both have negative wing surfaces uh, for maneuverability and roll performance. That actually helps with that. Plus they have like fly-by-wire systems which can help keep them straight so they don't need as much stability. They just need to be able to roll as quickly as possible and that's a good way to get more of that. But I suppose if you were like upside down or something, I guess it would be reversed, but I don't think you're supposed to be flying those upside down. <clears throat> upside down, like, you know, just normal. <laughs> anyway, and then some planes pretty sure do have a uh, close to uh, 
zero dihedral like this, which is just gonna like have basically like a neutral effect, so you can fly it like the same upside down and this way and stuff, though I'm not 100% sure. I think some like stunt planes and stuff are gonna be designed that way. And I know there's like RC planes that are designed that way definitely, so you could like fly those like like sideways like this, like using like your yaw control to like hold them up and stuff, because they're not gonna have any kind of wind uh, currents or anything trying to push them back up. Anyway, there's a reason why I made these these models here, and that is actually because they can glide. I actually put quite a bit of tweaking into these. Um, like I said before, a lot of this, uh, the dihedral effect and stuff doesn't quite uh, reproduce in Gary's mod perfectly, but you can get the gist of it just by these tests. Anyway, as a control, let's test the zero dihedral plane first. I'm just going to do a light toss here. I designed this so that it should be working good. I had to, I had to adjust the uh, vertical stabilizer a bit, because the vertical stabilizer basically, um, if you have a higher efficiency on it, then it'll like override any effect your wings are getting and just try to push the plane straight at an angle so you're gonna need a very low efficiency but you have to have efficiency on the vertical stabilizer because otherwise it's just gonna like slip all over the place it's gonna be like flying straight sideways and stuff you can't have that that doesn't that's definitely not realistic but then also you just can't have it you don't want your plane to do that anyway let's just go ahead and give this a nice light toss and see what happens so we're off to a pretty straight start first but now it's starting to tilt and it's really starting to tilt, and it's there's nothing counteracting it, so it's going to start spiraling. I mean, if we had control surfaces, we could control it and keep it from spiraling, but either way, it just spiraled into the ground fairly quickly. Okay, then let's go ahead and let's test the ahedral plane. This I actually have not... This doesn't seem to have as great of an effect as it seems like it should. It's kind of... It might just be because it's only a two-degree thing. But basically this should make it less stable, but it just looks very similar to the uh, plane we just saw. See, we're just watching it fly straight, and now it's starting to kind of lose it. It's also getting a lot of side slipping, and now it's just... Yeah, I guess that was a lot more severe of a spiral than the other one. <laughs> it took a while to do it, but it just basically completely lost control. But that looked partially because of just... It really just lost a lot of momentum there. I'm going to try re-throwing that just to see that that wasn't an anomaly. It looked kind of like the nose was up there and it just stalled, which it's not designed to do. It's kind of weird that that happened, but whatever. Let's try that again. There we go. Now we're getting more of a uh, spiral effect there. And that one's gone. That didn't look like as much of a stall. Okay, now here's where you see where uh, the Gary's Mod like physics and stuff aren't quite like real life, because the dihedral effect here it gets out of control. But you cannot, but you can see it. You'll you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. But it goes out of control, so it doesn't help very much with this example. But that's mainly just because I didn't want to spend like three hours making these models. Okay, watch this. Okay, now it's tilting one way. Okay. Now oh, it's going real easy here. It's still going easy, right around in a turn. Now it's starting to spiral now, but it's spiraling really slowly. So it's not too bad. That didn't that wasn't quite as good of a launch as I've seen before. I've seen it where it's actually like forcing itself back and forth. Let me check my uh vert stabilizer efficiency and just see if I can fix that a little bit. Let's make it about like two or something. Yeah, let's say, actually I think I know. Let's make it five. Okay, let's try it now. Okay, now we're seeing it a little bit more. See how it's going back and forth because the wings are fixing themselves? It's actually like tilting back and forth. See that? It's trying to fix itself, but it's going out of control just because of the uh <laughs> But do you, do you get my gist? Did you see what was just happening? Whenever it would lean lean this way like to the right then the right had better efficiency so it was actually lifting the right side up and then re then fixing itself but the problem is that since there's no wind resistance or anything it basically went out of control like uh like inertially it just kept it just kept going back and forth until it was going like crazy and just spun itself out of control but if you have really good weights and uh good control surfaces that shouldn't happen either way 
having a dihedral on your wing will help um, with uh, keeping your plane on a good heading. But uh, don't expect it to act quite like real life. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there we go. We get to see that effect just one more time here. See, now it's doing it. It's going back and forth. Back and forth. Woo! And then, you know, it's starting to lose control. But I think you can see the gist of it from this video. And uh, I'll I'll try to put up another video where I can where I actually have some designs of aircraft that actually have engines and stuff and control surfaces. But right now I don't think I have any zero dihedral aircraft at all. <laughs> and I never even attempted to make a ahedral aircraft before because I was like, why would I make this? Uh, it's probably just gonna lose control. But I'm gonna try that too just to see what kind of roll performance I can get out of it. But um, that'll have to wait for probably a couple days. Might have it up tomorrow. We'll see. Either way, I hope this uh, just kind of helps you understand exactly what that angle is supposed to do. Though Gary's mod, it acts a little bit different than, um, you know, than, than it ought to, technically, if this was like real life. But that's mainly because there's just no wind in Gary's mod, and the fin emulation of that isn't perfect. But it does do something. So, just keep that in mind. Anyway, that's uh, going to wrap it up for this video. And I'm hoping to have another one out where I can have some better, more concrete examples than these crappy gliders I made in like 15 minutes. Okay, see ya.